Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today we're continuing our study on the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and today we're talking about the revelation gift, discerning of spirits. Get ready. Drop the Today's topic that we're going to be discussing is called discerning of spirits. Again, today's topic that we're discussing is called discerning of spirits. If you've been following along with us, we've started a two-week study that we're covering the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we talk about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, sometimes these gifts are also referred to as the nine manifestation gifts. And you can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to find these gifts, or the list of these gifts is what I should say. We're covering the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and currently right now we're covering what we refer to as the revelation gifts. Now something that's important to understand as we've been saying is that with the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, they're actually broken up into three groups of three. You have the revelation gifts, you have the power gifts, and you have the inspiration gifts. We've been covering the past couple days the revelation gifts. We covered the word of wisdom. We covered the word of knowledge. And now we're covering discerning of spirits. As we do, we want to get right into this and we want to discuss what this is because there's a lot of material around this that we'd like to cover and we want to make you sure that you're well equipped. The first thing I want to do is I want to talk about what the discerning of spirits is not. What a what the discerning of spirits is not is, first of all, when people refer to it as a gift of discernment, it's not that. Okay, so we, let's just make that clear. The gift of discerning of spirits is exactly that. It's the discerning of spirits. This is not the ability to read minds. This is not the ability to under, you know, to, uh, it's not the gift of suspicion where if you suspect somebody of something, then that means that's automatically what's going on. No, that's not what this is. What the gift of the discernment is, is it's a divine ability that the Holy Spirit gives you where you're able to tell by a person's motivations or their behaviors with what spirit they're being led by. In other words, you're able to tell what spirit they have in them based on how they're motivated or how they're operating. You're able to tell through the discerning of spirits what is motivating them as far as a spiritual presence goes. Now, as we talk about this, here's why this is so important. You know, we all have five senses, and if unless you have some type of impairment, you have five senses. You have the sense of sight, you have the sense of smell, you have the sense of touch, you have the sense of hearing, and you have the sense of touch, okay? So five senses. However, when you're looking up at the stars, if you want to see the galaxy or stars that are far away, sometimes you can't see them by looking up at night and looking at them. Even if you go out in the middle of the country where there's no light pollution, you can't see them. You have to rely on a telescope. A telescope takes your natural senses and enhances it to where you can see what's out in space. Same thing on the earth, on the world right now. If you wanted to turn around and look at something on a cellular level, whether that's skin tissue or something like that, your natural eye can't see that either. You have to rely on a microscope. So what a gift of discerning of spirits is, is it's a divine gift that the Holy Spirit gives us that allows us to understand the what the spirits that are motivating a person behind their actions or, you know, as far as what motivates them, that's what helps us to understand that. And I will tell you, it's a super valuable gift. In fact, I will tell you that I also believe that this particular gift is one of the main gifts that always stays on. In other words, there are some gifts that come on and turn off and come on and turn off as the Holy Spirit's ministering through you. But two of the gifts that I feel always operate through you, this is one of them. This is a gift that I believe that if you're sensitive enough to being led by the Holy Spirit, this gift will always be on. Now I want to go ahead and get right into some words to show you where this is at. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to go straight to verse 9, and I'm sorry, verse 10, and this is where it first talks about this when it's giving the list of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's read. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to go down to verse 10. To another discerning of spirits. Now, when we talk about that, I've already told you what it is, but we want to talk about its purpose and why it's operating. So in order to do that, I want to take you right back in the Word, and I'm going to take you to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. So Hebrews 4, verse 12. Let's read. 
Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I will tell you that with the gift of discerning of spirits, it allows you to divide soul from spirit. In other words, this gift can be so fine-tuned if you're sensitive enough to the leading of the Holy Spirit that it can allow you to separate between soul and spirit. In other words, you're able to determine the spirits that are operating a person that motivate their intent, that motivate their decisions, that motivate their behaviors. This is given to us for protection so that we can be led by the spirit so that we're careful for to pay attention who we operate or associate with. One of the things I teach often is you are who you hang with. What happens is when you hang out with people, you have to be a bigger influence on them than they are on you. And spiritually, they can say all the right things and know all the verses in the Bible. But if they are not operating by the correct spirits or the correct intents or behaviors or actions, you need to know not to associate with them. And I mean by associate with them, I'm talking bringing them into your close circle of friendship. Well, how do you do that? by operating in the gift of discerning of spirits. That's one of the ways this can help you. I will also tell you that this gift can greatly help you in leadership when you're making choices, especially when you're having to appoint people to leadership positions, whether you're in ministry, whether you're in uh, or just a regular business within the secular world, doesn't matter. This gift has divine appointment within your life to help you appoint the correct people that you need for the correct positions because it's a gift of discerning a spirit. So I'm telling you, it can help you. I've used it for years and years. It is such a valuable gift. I also want to take you to another story, and this is in the Bible out of the book of Acts. This is chapter 8, verses 18 through 23. This is when uh, Peter and Paul, I'm sorry, Peter and John, where the word came to them that the word of God had reached Samaria. And so they sent, the apostles sent Peter and John to go and minister to them. And as they arrived, they realized that they had the word, but the Holy Spirit hadn't fallen upon them yet. So they go ahead and lay hands on them. But as they do, there's a sorcerer within the audience who wants this gift. And Peter confronts them. This is what it is. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 through 23. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles, hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, Simon's the sorcerer, saying, give me this power also that anyone whom I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. What you have to understand is that Peter was able to use the gift of discernment to see what the others could not. That wasn't like he walked in and this guy had a name badge that there at a convention. It's like, hello, my name is. It's not like this guy had a name badge that said, hello, my name is Simon. I'm a sorcerer. <laughs> That's not what that is at all. He was able to discern through the gifts of discerning of spirits. He was able to discern the spirits that were operating this guy that were motivating his intent. And that's why I helped him. Man, I can go on and on with stories about how this operated in the apostles' lives, how it operated in the Word. I can tell you about stories how it operated in my own life. I'll share a quick story with you and then we'll close. A while back, one of the things as I was preparing this teaching that the Lord brought to remembrance is I remember a time a while back when my family and I were shopping. This is years ago. We were redoing our backyard, and so we were doing some landscaping. And as we were, my family and I went to, uh, I believe it was Lowe's at the time. And as we went to Lowe's, we were in their outdoor gardening section. And as we were there, we were there shopping around. And all of a sudden, this person started walking down the aisle towards us. Well, as they did, I felt something in my spirit go off. And when I looked up, it was like razor sharp. I felt impressed to look up and hone in on a specific person. Not scanning the room, but looked up and honed in on a specific person because there were other people around. And when I did, instantly I knew what it was. This guy was being tormented by demons and led by demons or devils. I knew it just like that. I knew it. It went off of my spirit. 
And when it did, I saw him and I asked the Lord quietly inside, Lord, do you want me to go help this or address this gentleman? And he said, no. He just wanted to bring it to my attention so that I could protect my family. And so we had our kids and they were pretty small at the time. And I turned around and I said, Katie, hold up. And I said, kids, come to dad. And so my kids, you know, they're playing. They love playing in the gardening section. It's like a playground. <laughs> so they turned around and they came to me and I held them close. And Katie goes, what's wrong? And I said, I'll tell you in a minute. The gentleman walked towards us. And right as he approached about 10 feet within my wife and I, he, he, he would, he purposely avoided making eye contact with me. I mean, he, he like was, he was walking up and the moment he came close, he put his head down and was like looking away. He walked in a straight at us and then stopped and did a complete arch around us, like a half circle completely around us. Like as if he had had to avoid an obstacle. He did a complete arch all the way around us. And about 10 feet on the other side, started to walk in a straight line again. And my wife turned around and said, what was that all about? And I said, I'll tell you later. Let's shop and have a good time. Well, later I expressed to her what the Holy Spirit had shown me. Now, some people might say, well, how come you didn't go free that man? I'm going to share something with you. Whenever someone has a demon operating within their life, you cannot cast the demon out of them if the person is unwilling to let the demon go. I'm going to say that again. If ever a person has a demon operating within their life, you cannot cast the demon out unless the person is willing to let the demon go. If you turn around and pray over them, you might cast it out, but it's going to come right back in. But in most cases, the demon won't come out because the person is unwilling to let the demon go. That being said, guys, that concludes our story on the gift of discerning of spirits. I hope you found this teaching educational and encouraging. This is such a powerful gift. I wish I had more time to just continue to share with you on this because it's such a deep gift. Guys, as always, we want to remind you to swing by our website at neilreyes.com. You can also swing by our social media. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also find us on Facebook and Twitter and share these teachings. You know, we post these teachings at no cost. They're available to be streamed 24 hours a day on our website or social media. We want to get the word out and we're asking you to help us. If these teachings are encouraging to you and you're learning, then share them on your, on your social media feed. Share them with your family, your friends, your circles so that you can help get this word out and partner with us to get God's word out. Guys, in addition to that, if you have any areas that you would like to be taught in our subjects, we invite you to swing by our website and on our contact page, fill out the form and send it to us. Those forms.